I'll feed those back to you after that. So we're now going to find out here a little bit more about uh, some of the best practice in this area. And it's coming from Gary Gomersall from IBM Software. Gary, over to you. Thank you, Brian. So just uh, I've entitled this um, part of the discussion around an approach, really, to smarter business outcomes. So, so everything we're talking about and uh, our learnings from the 5,700 or so project engaged over the last three or four years inside IBM and certainly from a software business point of view is very much around how we target um, smarter outcomes for business and how we leverage SOA in the context typically these days around business process management. Um, if we look at the you know, typical problem statement, one I'm sure is a picture you're all familiar with in terms of how business pressures actually are compounded these days by the fact that IT constraints continue to grow. Um, the heterogeneous environment scenario, the fact in the, the right hand bottom um, bullet point there around IT constraints that uh, I think the latest statistics I reviewed was telling us that 76% uh, typically of IT budgets are spent on routine kind of maintenance and operating costs rather than, rather than on targeting new investment areas and uh, revenue uh, growth potential areas for the business. So that's obviously um, hamstringing the business in terms of its growth um, uh, agenda. So the idea and obviously the intention design point around SOA working with the businesses is to try and you know, remove that stranglehold on business agility. And uh, we see very much that business agility uh, as being the key to business success in the current uh, economic climate even more so than perhaps before. Um, not just around cost but just in terms of how you look at opportunities to improve business process, look at opportunities to maybe reconsider your sourcing strategies for applications or indeed look at different uh, channel strategies um, or competitive threats. So whatever it is that you do as a business to help determine the business strategy, you know, where the heat is in terms of operating environment or indeed in terms of growth is something that we need to target in terms of projects that IT can usefully um, flex the infrastructure to, to help support. So we very much talk about, you know, if we're in the room with the business and IT, it's very much about you know, why are we there? You know, what is the business outcome we're looking to drive? Um, in terms of a scope which is usually bounded within a cr uh, line of business or across a business around business process management. So typically nowadays we would say probably 65% of all projects that we see uh, from an SOA agenda are kind of driven from the aspect of business process and business process management. And um, if we can now almost maybe three or four years into the kind of uh, model around SOA adoption, um, the how um, of the, the infrastructure and the technology to support that, um, we're basing that around a kind of reference model that um, is fairly ubiquitous now around uh, IT and infrastructure. Um, increasingly, the discussion and the targeting of applications and the view of how you build composite applications and build new value, whether it from an IT um, perspective around things like at the entity level orders or products or indeed things like customers uh, as opposed to end-to-end uh, -end processes around order to cash uh, or around um, straight through processing and finance or whatever. Whatever your uh, view of the granularity of that service, the important thing is to be able to move towards a paradigm that allows us to you know, provide um, uh, different service consumers with that kind of approach, that ability to assemble new applications and drive uh, new value uh, from the existing business process and indeed uh, IT assets that support those. So that's very much the context uh, that we adopt and just looking at it in a different kind of way around uh, how you kind of take that into a kind of actionable plan and uh, put some verbs into the equation. It's very much around how we drive agility into the organisation. Um, and uh, fundamental to that, as we see, uh, going around in a rather um, perverse order here, number four, you know, building upon a smart, as we would describe it, SOA foundation, you know, having an infrastructure that is agile in relation to how it um, supports uh, integration, how it supports connectivity, and those fundamentals around things like an enterprise service bus construct in the context of being able to tame a view of a business process that is actually delivering that order to cash or that straight through process or that view on the supply chain which may be quite complex in nature and uh, trying to find ways to actually build uh, more control back and give control actually back to the business in actually making change, supporting variability, driving new levels of service level agreements for example. And then recognizing that in all of that um, um, capability set that a business is trying to either export to its um, partners or indeed its customers, you know, the expectations now are different in terms of how um, users and suppliers and partners want to consume your services. And the kind of whole Web 2.0 agenda has kind of changed expectations around how you build what we would term situational applications as opposed to 
mashup, so to speak, around you know, what is it about the current context, the current situation, the current role uh, within a pr process context that's been performed that determines how a particular service uh, should be used. And so that you know, meeting new customer needs, again, is another um, you know, attribute of what um, we talk about when we talk about smarter business outcomes. If we look at the kind of adoption patterns, I mean, critically, I think Dale was saying this earlier, very much it is the case, and especially now in the current economic climate, we've got to find ways to discover value, distinct and discrete value, at every uh, step of the adoption cycle, whether you're at the, as we talk about in terms of our SOA continuum diagram, from a foundational level of integration, where perhaps you're doing um, some modernization around a piece of connectivity or introducing an enterprise service bus, actually you know, building the foundations of an SOA infrastructure. And maybe you're talking about expressing um, functional capability at the level of kind of 10% of those functions being expressed as services. And you're only looking for a reuse element in the context of the IT landscape of around 5% or less. That, nevertheless, actually can be described in very crystal clear return on investment terms, which is important um, for not just the IT department, but actually for the business to realize. And so this diagram not intended to show a maturity model, but rather a continuum, because it's absolutely possible, as you look across to the right, when you talk about it extending to end-to-end -end business process management, where you're talking about coordinating and choreographing business processes across multiple lines of business this time, and you're actually trying to preserve, you know, in, in concept, uh, the notion of a process unit of work, you know, transactionality of a process. Uh, you, you're expecting at that point to have more buy-in and more involvement from more, uh, multiple lines of business, and you're probably looking to you know, express more of those uh, services, um, uh, functions rather, services in the order of kind of 40%, and the, the metrics move on. And these are real statistics uh, that we've built on, on our own experience of uh, the 5,700 or so uh, projects that we've been playing over the last three to four years. Uh, and again, what I've stressed in terms of this diagram is that it's absolutely the case now as we look on the right-hand side around what we would term the kind of advanced state around sense and respond kind of notion of how you as a business respond to real random sequences of events that there's now technology methods and tooling that can support that even in the context of you know just the extending of, the, of an end-to-end -end business process so it's not um, to say that those things are not realizable today in fact the the converse is true you can absolutely start to build applications that are that dynamic in terms of their ability to respond and sense uh, behavior in, in the real uh, real time world. Um, again, as you move forward and move across, and we, we've actually invested some time in, 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 um, and experience in, in some business patterns around adoption at the foundational level, uh, but as we move across around this notion of process integrity, uh, it, it's absolutely, it absolutely becomes critical as your implementation becomes more profound in its significance and more potentially complex, um, complex in the sense that it's actually um, uh, interfacing uh, or choreographing activities across multiple lines of business um, and running some very, very critical type, uh, parts of the application, it becomes absolutely fundamental that you can actually maintain the integrity of that transaction uh, across the process context, I should say, uh, in the context of information, um, uh, integrity in the context of interaction, how a user is involved in, uh, as part of that uh, workflow, being a manual task or an automated task, but the whole process has to be preserved with an integrity which is akin to the notion of transactionality, and that's importantly uh, when we look at anything beyond a moderate sized uh, implementation, what we're really talking about when we talk about SOA enabling uh, business uh, process uh, agility and business process management.